Hello, welcome to Paleo Greenbird. I'm Greenbird. I hope you're having an awesome day. Uh, today we are going to be, I think this is part five of the Dacite tool challenge or whatever I decide to name the videos. And we still have pretty much our entire chunk of Dacite left. Doesn't even look like we've taken anything off. Uh, we've gotten a few little itty bitty bird points and then that one, the last point we got, I think was a pretty substantial point. That would be a big game point if we needed it to be. So I'm going to take another flake today. As I'm taking these flakes, I'm also going to be cognizant of the fact that I am going to turn this piece of rock into a biface and preform at some point. So I don't want to just take random flakes. Um, it's easy, you know, when you're make, when you're taking the flakes one right after another in order to make a point, it's a lot easier to visualize your end product than maybe it is when you take one point or uh, one flake a day like I'm doing right now. So I'm just going to stop babbling and start grinding some edges. Oh, my grinding stone is wet. I don't like using a wet grinding stone, so I'm going to take the one out of my bucket instead of putting this on the porch. If I have one, I might not even have one. Usually I do, but it appears that once again I've been caught off guard and unprepared. So, I guess we're going to use the wet one. The thing about sandstone is it just soaks up all the water, and, uh, but that's alright, we'll be fine. Grind up all these loose spots, and that perfect platform and the perfect place will present itself to me. Just have to take a look at this stone as we're grinding it. I'd really like to take something off this tip here to thin out that thick spot. But to do that, I would need to take off a little bit of the length. So, I think what I might do instead, I'm going to have to clear off this junky part on the bottom anyway. So I might just take this platform right here, it's already there, try and blast off a flake going this way. Maybe I'll even go that direction a little bit, try and clean that up. Even the trash flakes, uh, or the chunks, I'm going to keep. You saw in the last couple of videos, there were a couple of small, junky pieces. I'm going to keep those anyway, because I'm going to try and see how many tools I can get out of here. I'd love, if I could get 50 tools out of this one rock, I'd be happy. That might be a little ambitious. So I'm going to take my medium sized billet. This platform is a little sharp, so I have to be careful. If I hit it too high, I'm just going to get a, a low flaking, or a low, uh, how do I put it? It'll just, it, the flake won't drive. It'll just kind of smack it off. So I'm, I'm going to actually try and hit a little bit more inward here so that I can drive a nice long flake across there and see if we get something that we can work with. All right, there we've got a little micro blade that came off. Maybe we'll just half that today and show what that can do. Beautiful micro blade. that up there. Okay. There we go. So there's the flake that we just took. 
right there. Now that is something we can work with. And this is what's left of our stone. That high spot right there. Maybe next time I'll make a platform right here. I'll drive off some of that. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. So we got this nice big flake here. This is something we can make a point with, without a doubt. And we have these small pieces here. These three would make really good bird points. And this one here is going to be a microblade. I'll probably film hafting this microblade. I don't know if I'm going to film all of the bird points just because they, you know, they're probably not going to be really exciting videos. I will make a video at the end of this challenge with every single tool that I've made out of these flakes just so you can kind of see what we got. So I'm going to take my hammer stone, get rid of all the stuff that doesn't want to be there. Like anything else, if you don't want to be there, just don't. Don't be there halfway. So, and then you've got that stuff that maybe sort of wants to be there, but you just don't want it there. <laughs> I think we all know what that's like. All right, so. Got this big bulb of percussion right here that I either need to try and thin out or just get rid of all together. And I'd love to keep that length, but I'm not really that good at it. So a lot of times I spend a lot of time trying to save that only to end up busting the point right there anyway. But let's give it a try. Let's try and learn something. So I'm going to take my pressure flaker and I'm just going to try and blast off that thick spot on both sides. Did not get a good grind. I'm trying to keep this dust off of as much as I can. My poor daughter, she got a big cut on her foot yesterday. I'm pretty sure it's from something that I tracked in the house. I don't know for sure, but it had that look, <laughs> that shape. If you've if you've stepped on debitage or scraps and you've gotten those cuts, you know they have that weird kind of like L-shaped look to them. That's uh, that's what it looked like, but she's tough, so. So I told her, I was like, well, if you're going to flint nap, you're going to get those cuts every once in a while, either on the hand or in your foot. It's just this time it wasn't her fault. It wasn't from her napping, it was from me. So I'm going to start shaping this and taking off some of that stuff that I'm not going to need. Is doing the trick. I'm trying to make sure I'm still supporting as best I can. I mean, at this point, it's just basically a mini biface.
Choose my platforms, they're just smaller platforms, that's all. Just trying to get rid of that, that bulb of percussion. There we go. That side, that definitely took a good chunk of that off. That was a good thinning flake. That is what I wasn't doing correctly at first. I was not treating this as a miniature biface. I was trying to rush and get right to pressure flaking. Which is really cool. Because that means I learned something off this little flake. I have a feeling this one piece of dacite, or dacite, this one piece that, we're work, that I'm working is going to teach me as much or more than probably the hundreds of dollars that I have spent on rock. Alright, so it's not much to look at, but at least it's thinning down to the point where we can start to shape it, and that's what I'm going to do now. So let's figure out where we want the tip. To me, Hmm. I feel like, because there's a thick spot here, I could either thin that thick spot out and make the tip right there, or make the tip here. I kind of like the amount of mass we have over here, so I think I'm going to make this the tip, even though there's a kind of an ugly spot right there, a little thick spot. That's where the, all the percussion was slash is still but I think it's thin enough now to where I can pressure flake it out so I'm going to shape it as if that's where we're going to have the tip as long as I can get it thin enough to zigzag that's all it that really matters to me at my skill level if you have other advice I'd love to hear it shape. Flip to the other side. Even when I feel like one side isn't completely worked, I still like to flip to the other side because otherwise you can just kind of zone out and get lost on that one side and end up with something that's just out of shape. That's no good. small flakes. Make sure I dust off real good before I go back inside. Alright, the base is thin. So I'm take my hammer stone and just fix that. Knock that, stuff, that thin stuff off. It doesn't have to be completely flat. I don't mind that curve because sometimes you can get some really cool effects with the notches when it's curved like that. Alright, back to the pressure flaker. Let's see, I'm losing my friction fit, so. It's alright, I'll keep flaking, I'll take a break in a minute, I'll fix that. I can still work with it. In fact, I'm going to switch flakers. Use my thinner one. I usually just use this one for notching, but... That's right. Oh, this, one's more. <laughs> this one lost its fit too. Be deterred. I have antler. Let me 
take me a second to adjust to the network because I haven't used it in a while. It will work. One thing I like about Antler is it has really good grip. Sometimes that copper can slide a lot. Trying to keep an eye on my center line too. Especially with these flake points. It's easier to lose your center line on a flake point than it is, you know, on a biface, a bifacial point. Because you have those consistent platforms on both sides. Sometimes with a flake point, you really don't have that. You usually have one side that's going to be a little bit flatter than the other. Unless you're working a thick flake, obviously, then you can, you know, you can drive those flakes inward and get that same effect as you would if you were using percussion. If the camera can see this. work on some different camera angles too. I might try and get like a GoPro so I can have the view that I'm seeing as well as the view that you're seeing. Uh, let's see here. Okay, the tip needs some love. The center line on this one side starting to go a little bit off. So let's fix that now. Fix the little mistakes right away before they become big mistakes. Or, I don't know, not mistakes, but issues. it really helps with that you know if you're, if you're making sure that you're flipping the piece frequently you'll have less problems with turtles at least that's what I've found I really like this bone this is um, I think this is white tail antler if I'm not mistaken Thin. Let's just want to get rid of that thin stuff because it's just going to break anyway. All right, so let's take a look at the shape that we have here. You can see it's pretty symmetrical. Just this side here needs to be shaped up a little bit. All things considered, pretty happy. I mean, realistically, this could be the size of a point that I would get out of that entire stone if I was to break it down. Concentrate, concentrating mostly on the shape right now. Nibbling this off. Trying to keep an eye on my center line. I know I keep saying that, but super important. 
especially when you're taking these pressure flakes because you know it's easy to get an angle on there bevel type look which isn't bad if it's on both sides but if you beveled on one side and not the other it's just not going to look good and probably won't perform well never have a good center line. I don't mind bevel points. I like bevel points to tell you the truth. I think they're, they're very sturdy, but they have to be beveled equally on both sides. Shape too. Show you, what, show you what this looks like after this pass. side just needs a little bit more taken off than the other side. So I'm going to do that right now. This video is probably going to be kind of boring. I don't have anything scripted to say. I don't usually do that, so. What you hear is what's on my mind. I'm pretty excited about this. Flake point, this is going to be nice. Just need to get that tip. That tip can sometimes be an issue. Do you flint nap, you know what I mean. That tip never wants to cooperate. Either wants to go in one direction or the other, or wants to fly off at the very worst time. when it pops off though it's kind of a blessing because it gets rid of that hard to deal with shape and leaves you with platforms to reshape it there we go I'd say that's a good center line so here's where we're at right now it's relatively thin I mean in my opinion I like kind of sturdy points probably going to start making some really thin ones just because I'll have the tools to do so soon and just kind of for the practice and they look really cool but they're not good to shoot um, so I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna fix my pressure flakers just need to fix that friction fit on them and I'll come back and we'll we'll finish up this point this will be point number five I believe all right very right back